Welcome to our walkthrough of the newly redesigned Science in the Classroom website. Here you will find annotated scientific papers. On the home page, these are grouped by the most recent annotated content, our most popular papers, as well as papers with activities or multimedia enhancements. Further down the page, you'll find some links to external resources, as well as a link to a page that describes how best to use these papers in the classroom. There are several different ways to look for resources available on this website. Here, we'll try using the search function. We'll look up papers by keyword, in this case, GFP. This brings us to a list of resources that describe the use of green fluorescent protein in scientific research. So, if you'd like to teach your students about GFP, you have several options to choose from. Beyond the search functionality, we also have all of our annotated papers listed in order of annotation date on the All Papers tab. So if you aren't 100% sure which papers to teach with, you can go through the full list of available resources using this function. In addition, we have all of the Science in the Classroom articles categorized by broad scientific topic. If you go to the topic section of our website, you'll find everything from anatomy and physiology to technology and engineering. Once you click on one of the topics, you will see a more refined, browsable list of papers relevant to that specific topic. Let's walk through one of the Science in the Classroom annotated research articles. Each article has the same anatomy in that they each include an editor's title and introduction. These are written by the annotator and are meant to engage the reader and entice them to read on. We also provide publication information about the original paper, as well as the text of the original paper, which has not been altered in any way. In addition, we include all of the original figures with their original captions. What makes this different, however, is that we've provided article tools and something we like to call the learning lens. The Learning Lens has several different annotation categories that you can toggle on and off based on what you're interested in learning more about. For the purposes of this walkthrough, I'm just going to toggle all of these lenses on so that we can see the paper in its full glory. Let's explore these Learning Lens annotations. Here, I'll click on one of the highlighted pieces of text in the article. If I click on Reef Building Corals, it will pop up an annotation within the Learning Lens. This provides a more in-depth explanation presented at a level appropriate for an introductory undergraduate audience. We've also found that these papers are well-suited for AP science classes, and we recommend that teachers use these annotated papers to learn more about a subject that they are unfamiliar with, but would like to include in their curriculum. In addition to the annotations provided within each of the learning lenses, all of the figures in the paper are accompanied by a set of tabs. These tabs provide a more in-depth explanation of the methodology, data visualization, or results and conclusions set forth in the figure. Here we see that the annotator has chosen to highlight experimental design, resulting response of the coral to the experimental conditions, and finally, a more detailed explanation of the statistical analyses used for this figure. You can also see that this resource has supplementary materials. For this particular Science in the Classroom resource, our partner was Howard Hughes Medical Institute BioInteractive. Embedding some of their multimedia resources has greatly enhanced the annotated research article. I'd like to showcase the References and Notes Learning Lens with annotations located within the citations of the paper. This is an annotated reference section, meaning that the annotator has used this lens to highlight key papers and the body of work supporting the current research. In addition, this is a space to note how the current paper contributed to the overall body of knowledge surrounding this research question. This helps highlight the process of science for your students, demonstrating how prior work is used to guide research direction, and new research in turn contributes to our understanding. Each of our annotated papers comes with a set of article tools that we can see at the top of the page. We've been focusing on the paper, but many of our articles have accompanying data activities. These allow for hands-on exploration of data analysis and statistics, typically using a simplified set of data from the original paper.
Outside activities, such as those seen here from HHMI Biointeractive, can also be included to enhance the annotated paper. Each Science in the Classroom article also comes with an educator guide. These guides highlight alignment to learning standards and frameworks with a particular focus on the nature and practice of science. We've asked annotators to identify appropriate standards from a framework for K-12 science education, Common Core English Language Arts Literacy, Common Core Statistics and Probability, AP Science Practices and AP Curriculum Standards, and finally, from Vision and Change for Undergraduate Biology Education. If there are other standards that you'd like to see included, please let us know. Educator guides also provide a summary of the article meant explicitly for the educator, as well as a set of high-level discussion questions for you to use in class. We also allow Science in the Classroom users to download a PDF copy of the original, unannotated research article without requiring membership to AAAS. We thank the Science Editorial team for making this available to educators and students alike. The final article tool available for each of our resources is Related Science News. If this research was highlighted in popular science articles, like those you might find in National Geographic, Science News, or Scientific American, we link those articles back to the resource. This tool helps the user explore the research from the article in a broader scientific and societal context. We try as best we can to keep as current as possible. A new feature of Science in the Classroom that we're particularly excited about is our collections. These provide groupings of annotated papers, external resources, and activities, all centered on a specific theme. Each also provides educators with a guide for using all of the resources within a collection as one cohesive teaching tool, complete with suggested discussion questions and activities. Collections can encompass any theme relevant to science in the classroom, anything from the field of research to a showcase of a method or technique. We're always looking for more collections, so if you have an idea of one that might fit into your learning goals, please get in touch. To learn more about science in the classroom as a project and more about our funders, please visit the About Us page. You can also browse around to meet the SITSE team members and our advisory board. Finally, you can see the list of all annotators and authors whose work is available on the site. The Volunteer tab provides more information about serving as an annotator and answers some frequently asked questions, in case your experience using this with your class inspires you to become a contributor. We hope that you enjoy using Science in the Classroom to teach your students about the nature and process of science, and that you will spread the word about these resources to your friends and colleagues. This concludes the walkthrough of our website, and thank you for joining me.